Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be revisiting a past video of mine and seeing how well I know my reading taste. Spoiler, not at all. Not at all. So we're going to be revisiting my... I did this video like five months ago. It was five books that I thought were going to be five stars. So five star predictions. And the books that I chose were The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry, The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley, The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, The Plot by Jean Haunts Corlids, and The Gunkle by Stephen Raleigh. Now I did this at the beginning of the year and the reason why I thought these books were going to be five stars is they were all on my TBR so I already had copies of them and these are the ones that I put on my TBR on recommendation from other people. So other readers, other influencers influenced me to buy these books. They were on my TBR and I was like, these are the ones that I think based on what the other person said, I'm gonna rate it five stars. Let's go through the list and then we will talk about how we did the first one, The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. I will have the original video linked down below just in case you wanna watch that and hear what I was saying in that video. But for the sake of not watching that video, um, I put this on my TBR because of Jessie from Reading with Jess. Um, she's one of my really good friends here on booktube. I love her to death. I think she's hilarious. But she has been trying to convince me to read this book for a few years now. Um, and I bought it a while ago. Um, and then I finally read it. And as you guys know, if you keep up with my videos, I loved this one. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go more in depth in my thoughts, of course, but let's just do a brief little intro to them. The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley. First book by this author, heard about this on a bookish podcast. The way they described it, I was like, oh my goodness, that reminds me of this other book that I read that had this like little kitschy town. And I think I'm gonna fall in love with the town, the characters, and possibly the story along the way as well. Um, so that's why that was on my TBR. The Love Hypothesis I picked up from Book of the Month, but I was literally seeing it everywhere, like book talk, bookstagram, other YouTubers and things like that. Like everybody was reading this book. So I was glad that I picked it. Um, the plot. This is one I heard about a lot on booktube from other thriller readers that were saying like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. This is so amazing. And then I was researching for something for my podcast and I came across this book in like a list that I saw that said it's like a really ingenious plot, the writing is fabulous and all of that. So between having people on YouTube tell me it was amazing and seeing it on this list, I was like, okay, let me take a chance on it. And I ended up picking that one up at the book exchange. And then the last one, The Gunkle, kind of same thing. I heard about this everywhere when it released. It was actually one of my most anticipated books because I was seeing it everywhere and I read the synopsis and I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so freaking cute. It's like an LGBT gay uncle takes um, care of guardianship of his niece and nephew and they're going to Palm Springs and I was just like, I'm living for this plot. So those are the five books, The Perfect Child, The Invisible Husband of Frick Island, The Love Hypothesis, The Plot, and The Gunkle. Now let's go through them one by one and see how I did. Um, okay, The Perfect Child, without a doubt, five out of five stars, absolutely loved this. A lot of people compare it to The Push by Ashley Aldrain, and I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree too. I mean, they are similar, but they kind of handle things from like two different perspectives. And I also forgot that this one is told and three POVs, which is so freaking cool. And I think that's why I really, really liked it. So you have both the husband's and the wife's POV, and you also have this other woman um, let's see, what's her name? Piper, who's being interviewed for this case. And at first I was like, I don't even know who this woman is. I don't even know what this has to do with anything, but I was just going along with it. You have Christopher and Hannah. They're a happily married couple. He's a surgeon, she's a nurse. Um, the only problem in their marriages is that they're unable to conceive. So after all of the tests, all of the thing, they're considering international adoption. But one night, um, a little girl comes into the ER on Hannah's shift and she's brought in with like nothing but like a diaper and it seems like she has like wounds and possibly like 
like something happened to this girl they're trying to find her family and Hannah tells of course her husband about it and then her husband ends up being the surgeon that fixes like um, a broken elbow or a broken bone in her arm or something like that and he takes an interest in the patient and the patient seems to really bond with him and the police and stuff like that are having a hard time like tracking down her family and finding out where she came from and how she ended up where she did and all of that so they don't want so they're thinking like okay well everything's fine now it's been a while she's been in the hospital we kind of need to get her out of here so we can get more people in and they're like we're gonna have to put her under foster system so Christopher and Hannah decide we are going to foster her. We will foster her. You continue looking into her family and then, you know, the whole thing will be done. Well, they end up really falling in love with the little girl and more so Christopher is like really bonded to her, but the mom like not so much. And I think that's where the comparison from the push comes in. Anyway, she's really bonded with Christopher, not so much Hannah, but of course Christopher has to go back to work and Hannah's staying there with her. And then just like crazy stuff happens. Um, and it's a lot to do with like, the little girl's trauma like what she's been through and the thing is is in the push when the mom and that is going to doctors they're telling her that nothing is wrong with her like they're like this is not happening this is all in your head like she's talking to her husband about it and like her friends and her family about it and they're like yeah nothing's wrong it's just postpartum depression where in this one um hannah's like we need to start taking well both of them are really because you know they're in the medical field so they start taking this um little girl to different doctor's appointments and the therapists and the doctors are actually saying yes this is trauma yes it's this that and the other but it's still like a crazy situation to be in anyway they end up fostering to adopt this little girl and it is just wild i always tell people if you have young kids i would probably skip this one for now maybe forever i don't know but i'm not gonna it's not something that i can just like blanket say everybody needs to pick up this book because it is very dark it has some content warnings and you need to do your own research about it for sure but if you like dark twisted things highly recommend. Jesse was absolutely right. Absolutely loved this book so freaking much. And yeah, I will recommend it to people that like dark and twisted things. Just not like a blanket recommendation for everybody. You know what I'm saying? The second book was The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley. And this one I put on because I heard it recommended on a podcast and they made it sound really good. It reminded me of like the way that they were talking about the town and the characters reminded me of a season for second chance chances by Jenny Bayless is that the right author I don't know anyway I'll pop in a picture for you um I absolutely loved that book this one was the complete opposite I rated it two stars I so in this one you have a wife that her husband dies they live on this little island and he's like a fisherman and his boat capsizes and he dies and everybody on the island knows it because it's a small little island you know but one morning she starts talking to tom her husband as if he's standing right beside her they go out on their weekly dates to the local like seafood restaurant um, and everybody in the town just kind of goes along with it like he's there and they'll even say like hi Tom and stuff like that it's so weird and the thing is is that this journalist comes over to cover uh, this like cakewalk this annual cakewalk that this little um, town does um, and then when he gets back from doing that they say oh you missed the real story so he comes back to Frick Island again and that's when I thought we were going to see like this community from an outsider's perspective and you know I was going to fall in love with like the characters of this island because like how could characters that are pretending that a guy is still alive not be cool interesting weird characters you know and they just weren't they were everything was like super surface level it didn't describe the town to me or the island to me it didn't describe the community well enough to me it didn't describe the like what was going on type thing and the whole time I just wanted someone to ask her or any of the other people like why is she pretending like her husband is right beside her? Um, I wanted the journalist, since that's who we were following, to ask 
anybody. Like, what was going on? And they never did until like towards the very end. And then once he asked her, like, what's going on with Tom, your husband, she literally answers the whole book's question in one sentence. And I was just like, what? So I know like in thrillers and just like other books in general, you're all kind of building up to like most times. Sometimes there's multiple kind of plot points and stuff like that, but there's like one overarching thing. There's like the moral of the story or like the crux of the story, the conflict resolution type thing. But in this one, it was all solved in literally one sentence. And then after it was solved, there was like so much more of the story that I could just couldn't care less about and didn't like the characters, didn't like the setting, didn't like the pacing, all of that. So that was just a big no for me. And like I said, I rated that one two out of five stars. Um, I wanted to love it, just didn't work out. Okay, the next one, The Love Hype. You guys already know I rated this one five out of five stars. It was so freaking good. I absolutely loved this one. It was so cute. Oh my gosh. So I love Olive and Adam individually. Like they were just such interesting characters, but I also loved them together. Um, let's see what I said about this one. It has so many different things going for it. The grumpy sunshine trope, fake dating, like the student teacher, but like she's in grad school and he's not really her teacher, you know, but still um, women in STEM, great grad school representation, lovely friendships, but also some bigger conversations about like sexuality and like women in STEM and stuff like that. So loved all the different little tropes they threw into this one. Um, so at the very beginning, Olive kisses Dr. Carlson and lies to her best friend um, that they're dating. And yeah, so that's kind of how that whole thing goes down. And of course, it's just the cutest. They go to the little cafe and they're ordering drinks and they're hanging out and it's just and they go to this conference and then that's where stuff like really goes down. I don't know you guys. I really, really, really liked this one. I love me a good nerdy boy and Adam did it for me. Adam did it for me. I loved it. Yeah, it's so worth your time if you haven't read that book already. The next book we're going to talk about is The Plot by Jean Haunts. Corlets. Um, okay, so I was disappointed with this one. I think I was generous and gave it two stars, but it probably deserves one star because I just didn't like the writing. And it's probably a me problem because I know so many people love it. Anyway, okay, so this is about a professor that's teaching some type of writing course and saying like how you have to be like a really good writer to make your plot come across really well. And a student kind of challenges that and says, you don't really have to be that great of a writer. You just have to have a really good plot. And so the teacher's like, oh yeah, well, let me hear this plot. So the student tells the professor the plot and the teacher is like, okay, this student really kind of has a point. Well, um, time passes, you know, time passes. And then the teacher is always waiting for this book to be published and it like never is. So they look up the student and find out that the student has like passed away or something like that. And they're like, well, I'm going to write that book now. So they write this book and it blows up. It's like super popular New York Times bestselling book and all of this. And they're like, holy crap, this person did it. <laughs> I did it, you know? And then they get like this mysterious note that says, I know you didn't write this book and you're just trying to find out who knows that he stole the plot. Um, and yeah, I can tell that the author that wrote the book, Jean Haunts Corlitz, I can tell that they know a lot about writers and writing and stuff like that. I don't care about that. 
it was boring to me. So, and the plot of his book wasn't that interesting to me. So, I don't know. This one was just like a whole mess and I didn't really get the hype. So, I rated that one two out of five stars. All right, moving right along. Last but not least, we have The Gunkle by Stephen Rawley. And unfortunately, this was also not a five stars. So this one was a big fat DNF. I uh, feel kind of terrible about it. I uh, really wanted to love it, really wanted to support this author and this book and all of that, but I just can't. Um, surprisingly, it was the writing that just was not for me. I DNF'd this so fast, I gave up on page 30 four, which may seem like, oh my gosh, Gwen, you did not even give this book a chance. The thing is, previously to me picking up this book, I picked up um, another book by this author called The Editor. So The Editor by Stephen Rowley, I picked up before this, read quite a bit, um, but I was just completely bored and the writing was kind of like this like humor that I wasn't really like jiving with. I felt like I should have been like laughing along, but I was just sitting there like, I didn't get the humor and I wasn't really interested in the plot so much because it was just like so ridiculous to me. And just the way the characters were acting were all, was also supposed to be like humorous or satirical and I don't like satire usually guys. Um, so yeah, that just, it wasn't working for me, but I hadn't heard anything about that. So I was like, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and try the gunkle. And so, like I said, I gave it 34 pages and the humor and the writing was pretty much the same. Um, of course, different plot line and all of that, but I just couldn't stomach like a book this thick. I maybe could have read like a short story. I could have pushed myself through a short story, but like, no, I just couldn't do it. So I know a lot of people love that book as well as the other books that I talked about that I did not like, but let's go through our star ratings once again, shall we? So I gave The Perfect Child five out of five stars. If you can read it, absolutely read it. The Invisible Husband of Frick Island, two out of five stars. I would personally skip it because it didn't have like a good setting. The plot was kind of meh and the characters were kind of meh. So just skip that one. Um, the Love Hypothesis, five out of five stars. Highly recommend. The plot also two stars, not really a fan. And the gunkle was a DNF. So those were my five star predictions. At least I got two five star books out of the whole entire list. Uh, don't know if I'm going to do another five star predictions or not. I'm considering it, but I really want to take a look at my shelf and like take other people's thoughts and feelings like out of the books and like genuinely see if I think I'm going to love a book based on like my own research and my own like reading the synopsis and stuff like that rather than having other people influence me. So if you think I should do another five star predictions, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye guys.